Hello, happy Easter, everyone, depending on when you're seeing this. Um, so I'm just going to follow up on um, what I was talking about chaos last time. I don't even recall. I guess we'll see the upcoming chaos that is coming. See if we can get some more information um, about that. But don't worry, this is not going to affect those who are divinely protected that are living in the vibration of love. All right, you ready? Okay. So interestingly enough, this is happening very soon. Um, the chaos and the destructive forces that are being exposed, okay, that are being exposed, are going to cause chaos and destruction. Um, as we speak about them, these, um, the protection that they were living under um, is becoming, they are becoming visible. So um, before this, they were hiding basically under a blanket um, and they were not visible to everyone. They could not be seen, um, but they are becoming visible now. So concerning the chaos and destruction that is to follow this exposure, um, lands <clears throat> um, will be affected. Short term, this will be uh, destructive. Long term, um, it will be very profitable. Hmm. That's interesting. To allow these, the flow of these energies this easygoing flow um, to just be um, prosperity will follow the chaos and destruction um, for all who remain <clears throat> for all who remain okay just let me dig into this a little bit more okay um, changes that are occurring uh, on our earth are due to a visibility barrier um, being removed. This is going to happen very soon. Um, once the visibility barrier is removed, everything will be exposed. Um, so those who were hiding safely, feeling comfortable, safe, um, not being exposed to what was truly happening on our earth, will now have eyes to see it. So this is a good thing um, because, so I'm thinking about this in the, in the way of, um, let's say that you're doing therapy and you're not aware of something. When you're not aware of something, you can't do anything about it. You can't change it. You're, you're not, you would never change it because you're not even aware that it is there or that it's happening. But as soon as you become aware of it, then all of a sudden this allows for change to occur. So this is happening um, to allow for change to occur. <clears throat> okay, what does this chaos and destruction look like? Okay, it looks like the visibility barrier being removed. Therefore, when this happens, there will be disturbance, um, disruptive patterns um, that were making a regular occurrence in these people's lives, the people who are being exposed, um, these patterns will immediately be broken for them. They will have to deal with the karma from what had previously been going on. But here's the thing about it. The karma that they will have to deal with will be different for every single one, depending on their level of knowing what was really occurring and depending on their level of allowance of what was really <clears throat> occurring that they were actually aware of. The people do not have to pay for karma for things that they were unaware were happening. E even if they 
somehow played a role in that if they were actually ignorant to it, um, they will not have to pay back the karma, the karmic cycle um, because of it. This is a very low percentage of those who will be exposed, but there will be some of them. Um, there will be people who are filled with rage and hate over um, what is going to be made visible. Um, it is going to cause a massive disturbance. It's going to cause disturbance in the media, um, civil, um, community-wise, on every level. It is going to be destructive. But here's how we navigate through this. So it ends up in the plus, not the minus. Either way, it's inevitable that we will end up in the plus. <clears throat> how we na navigate these, the, dis the destructive forces that are going to become visible, um, what we must do is pray for them. It's so simple. We must pray for them, sending them pure love that they will become aware at a very deep soul level they already know but they need to be reminded at a very deep soul level why we came here in the first place once this awareness comes back to them it is the bridge that will create an era of love and peace throughout all of creation. So it's a necessary and needed evil. There's no such thing. I mean, there is, yes, there is, but <clears throat> it's a necessary and needed evil or destructive force. Um, that's going to be made visible. So this does not mean um, effectively that, effectively this means that we will all be affected on some level because of this. But depending on our level of internal destruction, um, that will depend on what we see play out <clears throat> on the stage of the world. We cannot see what we don't um, hold within us. So this is why it is a very vital time for us to heal um, any <clears throat> trauma from the past. Um, why it is important for us to find forgiveness um, for others who have harmed us um, or diminished us in some way, knowingly or unknowingly, um, revenge, rage, hateful thoughts, anger, um, jealousy, uh, criticisms, condemning, um, all of these things. If we can heal these things, before this time occurs, we will easily be able to forgive these people for uh, the destructive force that they unleashed on the earth because of their actions. This is what is needed to create the era of love and peace. And the only way that we come out of it is through forgiveness. I'm reminded of the Martin Luther King thing. <laughs> Um, that hate creates hate, love creates love. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he said, but we can't hate these people and expect to end up with love. Like hate plus hate doesn't equal love, right? It equals hate. So this is all about us doing the internal work. So what we're seeing in our own 
visible reality will change depending person to person. So, sorry, I just hear somebody at the door here. Um, Earth is going through a transformational change. Right now, it's occurring. One of these trees was found. Was it? By the neighbors. Oh. Because mom brought it back. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, know. I thought that might happen. I thought that might happen too. I'm like, but... what kid wouldn't see that and go uh -huh. and get it? And want it, yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> so there will only be 13 of them. Okay. Good thing you remembered. <laughs> So, the transformational changes that are occurring are going to result in an era of peace and love. How long this takes, how long these destructive forces will remain in power, um, and by that I mean, think of this as a control issue. Let's say that somebody harmed you in your life. Um, and you haven't forgiven them yet, well, then they still have control over you. That's just a fact. As soon as you forgive them, they no longer have control over you. So depending on how long it takes the collective um, to shift their visible reality to a reality that is going to create an era of peace and love, um, and the shift occurs inward first, and then we'll see it outwardly. That is really what is dependent upon how long what is about to occur very soon will actually last in our world. So a rapid shift is what is needed to get us out of it. This is why spreading messages of inner healing and that it's really the only thing that matters while we're here um, is so important because once we've created new patterns um, that are geared towards creating an era of peace and love then everything shifts so for example Let's say that destruction um, chaos was going on all along in the world. Is it beneficial for you to join in on those conversations about, oh my God, I can't believe that this is happening, blah, 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 and to join into the, uh, like even just talking about it actually feels very electric, um, amped up, but like in a, not, not in a good, loving, positive way, but in a, in a powerful um, way, but not, I would not consider what I'm feeling right now anything remotely um, close to an era of peace and love. It's just not. But what is needed to occur during this, so just envision this for a moment. I want you to imagine that there's all this chaos and destruction that is going around, but that there is one person that is sitting in the middle that is holding the space that is filled with just light, so pure love, and they are emitting this pure love. Okay, now I want you to think about when you walk into a house, let's say you walk in, and maybe the vibe is off, and you walk in and you're like, ooh, what's going on in here? The reason why you picked that up was because somebody is emitting, or maybe several people, were emitting a certain energy frequency, and you picked it up. Nobody even had to say anything. You felt it. This is what happens when light workers hold light. By holding that vibration of pure love, um, I've said this before in previous ones, it affects a thousand people. So if you live in a 30,000 city with 30,000 people, you just need 30. You just need 30 people there. 
that can hold the pure love light vibrational frequency and everyone there will be protected and safe. So it is very important as we are creating this era of peace and love that as this destruction, this, these destructive forces are being exposed, that we don't feed that machine that allows them to stay in control, right? So when we feed that machine, we're feeding fear and hate and disgust. Um, that's what we're feeding. We don't want to feed that. We want to create an era of peace and love. Therefore, we have to be that peace and love. I know it sounds so simple. Um, but when shit hits the fan and things start happening and people start getting exposed, um, it's been happening. It's going to wake up the people that couldn't see it before their visible reality is going to become awakened this is good they might not believe that it's good um because what is being exposed obviously is is not good um but in a way it is, it's not a bad thing because once we have the awareness, once everybody has the awareness of it, then we will choose to do things differently. Our world is going to be flipped, completely flipped, completely. And these destructive forces cannot control us after this occurs, but those of us who remain here to hold the light um, must do our jobs. That's it. We just must hold the light to create an era of peace and love. So I don't say any of this to make any of you afraid. It is their karma that is returning to them and we are going to be exposed to it in our visible reality. And we must not feed it. We must take control back by being the light and the love. So let's do a meditation right now. Um, if you're listening to this, thank you. First of all, love you guys for being here. <laughs> so few of you. <laughs> um, if you're here, okay, you can just start by closing your eyes and you're just going to take in a couple nice deep breaths and let it out. And then as you let out that exhale, feel how nice it feels when the next time you breathe out, you let it out with a big sigh. So taking that breath in and then just <sighs> letting it out. And then as you let it out, do that like two or three times. Breath in, let it out with a sigh and feel yourself relaxing into it. Breath in, breath out, feel yourself relax into it. Okay, and now I want you to imagine that you are sitting in the middle of this beautiful, beautiful green lush field. Maybe you're sitting with your legs crossed and you are out with the sun shining on your face and you're meditating in this field. And it's so calm and it's so peaceful. And as you breathe in, the air that's all around you is so calm. And so you breathe in that calm and you breathe out that peaceful energy. Every time you breathe in, you're breathing in the calm and you're breathing out that peaceful energy. And now every time that you do this, I want you to just imagine you so you're still in that grassy area and the light 
from the sun begins to actually illuminate you. You begin to glow up and get really, really bright because of that sun. And pretty soon there is this energetic aura around you that is just this beautiful, bright, divine white light. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and expanding more and more and more and more. And in the middle of this space, I want you to imagine that as you sit there cross-legged or however you're sitting in that space, that in your hands now you're holding just this beautiful heart that is radiating love. And it's just there in your hands and it's just emitting just like, whoa, 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 this beautiful energy of light and of love and of peace. But this pure love energy that is just radiating out there in your hands, I want you to charge it up as if it was a battery. So you can just think about that heart in your hands. And as you think about it, I want you to just think a loving thought whatever it happens to be, and just notice how it gets bigger. And then think another loving thought, and then notice how it gets bigger. So you could even just think about things that you like. You could think about beautiful flowers. Oh, they're just, they're made so perfectly just for us to enjoy. And that love light just gets bigger. And you could think about, oh, the smell of grass or of pine trees. Oh, it doesn't need to be there, but it is there. And it's just made just so perfectly for us. You could just think about the love that is there and it just grows bigger and bigger. So just kind of for a few moments here, I'll give you about 10, 15 seconds. I want you to just think about charging that up with more love. So just with things that you like or things that you're thankful for, things that bring love to you. I want you to notice how that feels. And then for a second, we're going to divert your attention here. So I want you to just keep thinking about that, how good that feels. And I want you to think about the energy of complaining or criticism or condemning. And notice how immediately your energy depletes. And I want you to notice what place you felt it deplete. This is destruction within yourself. This is not allowed in the new era. It's not allowed in an era of peace and love because criticism and condemning and complaining does not create anything other than what it is. It doesn't create love. Okay. So I want you to imagine here, shifting back again to that thing you love. So I want you to imagine you're holding a heart in your hand. I want you to think about that love that's there. We're going to charge it up so you could think about the most adorable little puppy or kitty or something that just like lights up your heart and makes you feel good and happy. Makes you feel love. I want you to think about heavenly love raining down on that puppy or kitty or whatever that thing was that you were just thinking about. And that that thing is in your hands. So a moment ago, when you had the thought of criticism or complaining or condemning, I want you to take that love that's there in your hands and I want you to grab it. And I want you to pour it and put it into that part of your body and breathe that love into that part of your body that previously could feel that um, space where criticism and condemnation and complaints used to live. And I want you to just fill it up with love. Let heavenly love pour through your hands into that part of your body and just fill it up with that love. And it's calm and it's peaceful. And then imagine that in that part of your body, you're going to put this visual picture, just a world that is completely, there's an era of peace and love. Imagine a world inside of you in that space where that used to be. Now there's love there. I want you to imagine an era of peace and love animals, humans, plants, all of it. We have enough. We have everything. We share. We trade. We allow. We get along. We love. We truly love and care for each other. 
the best way possible. And as you imagine that era of peace and love, I want you to imagine that you are the one in a thousand. And so you are emitting that frequency of love out into your community. And it is so bright and so brilliant, that era of peace and love, that it begins to change those around you, especially those who are closest to you first, that pretty soon they turn into that love light. And then they, the next one's out and out and farther out and farther out and farther out. That it's all like this wave of enlightened consciousness that creates this era of peace and love in our world. And it's a wonderful gift that you have been given, that you are part of the light, the first people that are here to awaken the rest and to create this era of peace and love. It's a wonderful gift to be that light. And then you can just put a little um, smile on your lips there. And then you can sort of blink your eyes all the way back open and back into the room. Excellent. So this is this is this meditation that we did this. Just when you think about this in a day, this is you, you're the light. So be the light. So if there's part of you inside of you that cannot be the light, then you need to work on that. We are creating an era of peace and love and we can't create peace and love when there's still chaos there. It is the chaos that is needed first to bring attention to that area that we need the love and the peace. So it's not a bad thing. So don't be mad at it. If it's there, don't shame it or guilt it or anything that it's there. Just be aware that it's there and aware like, okay, I need to take some control and to heal this part inside of me and then work on that. Because very soon as these shifts are changing, our perception in this world and about this world is going to change and it is going to create an era of peace and love. And it's us, it's you and me um, and all of us light workers, um, those of us who have found each other that are creating this, we all do it. Um, this is necessary. So what's coming? The destructive forces becoming visible. It's okay. The chaotic energies that are there. It's okay. We're going to make it through it. Um, by being pure love. Um, the worst that can happen um, during this time to you if you are a light worker um, is that you might feel tired and energetically depleted. Um, very soon that will shift. Um, it's happening right now because we need to be in a place of rest. We all need to be in a good place, but just know you're here um, because you're supposed to be here right now. So you can't get it wrong. Um, you're exactly where you're meant to be. Um, we're manifesting through our thoughts, through our energies, this era of love and peace. It's going to be wonderful. Um, because the world needs it and they need it right now. So as we're preparing for what is um, very soon to follow, um, just know that we are safe and that everything is as it should be. It's meant to be this way. So this is not a bad thing. There's, there's no such thing as anything that's bad because everything is made of love. And so even when something appears to be very bad, um, it all works to bring about the good. I'll give you one last example, then I'll let you guys go. If you um, think about somebody going through a divorce, um, and you know, a lot of people, oh, it's such a struggle, oh, it's whatever, it's this and that. It's on the other side of it. It's like, it's such a needed and necessary thing, these, perceivably bad things that have to happen to take us up here where we need to be. 
So even in my own life, you know, the bad things that I've gone through in my life have all led me to the good. They led me to these amazing spiritual enlightenments that I don't think would have ever happened. I needed those things to push me to be like, I can't live like this anymore. I have to heal this and to go out and to do the work and to heal it and to then have these amazing spiritual experiences purely because of that. So I love you all and I hope you have a wonderful day today and I will see you guys in the next video.